Two years ago, the state parliament legislated to fully protect Aboriginal heritage sites. From rock engravings and tree carvings to archaeological sites, New South Wales is rich with an often ignored pre-European history. Despite tough penalties, it appears thousands of artefacts are still being destroyed from a combination of ignorance and a lack of enforcement by authorities. Sally Block with this report. Australia's landscape is rich with the masterpieces of Indigenous artists. Carved, engraved or painted, they signpost more than meeting places. The art traces stories of celestial beings across the earth, moon and stars. We see lots of petroglyphs or rock engravings of different types of figures. We see shields, we see fish, we see culture heroes like Dara Mullen, we see engravings of emus, even penguins. So we have a lot of artifacts and a lot of different types of engravings around the area here. For Dwayne Hamaker, it's science and not just history that makes this rock art site unique. High on a plateau in Kiringai Chase National Park, he's investigating ancient knowledge that's been traced in the stone. We're trying to examine if there's any sort of astronomical symbolism with these rock engravings. Unfortunately, we don't know a lot about the meanings of the engravings. The astrophysicist is part of a fraternity researching Aboriginal knowledge of astronomy. When that point are coming down and looking down, and uh, we say that we say with the language, that means I'm going to feed a plum. So it's a lot like solving a puzzle. We have to look at different pieces of evidence. So one of the pieces of evidence is that some of the engravings, like the emu, um, seems to mimic the emu in the sky, which is traced out by the dust lanes in the Milky Way itself. This is a case where somebody's taken a rock like this. You can see it's been grooved around the sides, and they've tried to go in and regroove it. Today, Hamaker is worried. He says researchers are racing against time to document these sites because even deep inside highly protected national parks, there's fresh damage. They may not have realised it, but they've actually damaged this engraving. It's the same story across much of New South Wales and many Indigenous people are anxious that more and more ancient heritage could be vanishing. Two years ago, one of the state's most significant Aboriginal heritage sites was lost under the concrete foundations of this fast food franchise. The country's largest KFC restaurant was built here in Newcastle in spite of an archaeological survey finding thousands of years of history on the dig site. Some of the early artefacts predate the antiquities of Egypt. Basically, it looks like we found a couple of hearts. There's a lot of charcoal, so we pulled out samples of that for dating. Johnny de Gravio is the archivist at the University of Newcastle, a custodian of thousands of artefacts rescued from that dig. It's an important site historically because it was the site of the government farm and um, when the first missionary to the Aborigines um, at the time arrived, um, Reverend Throckeld, they put him up there for the first year and it was there that he began the first methodical study of an Aboriginal language ever. So it's really significant from that point of view. Despite the promising fines, legally there was no obligation for developers to preserve them, either to protect their heritage or investigate further. The excavation and construction was fully approved by local and state governments prior to the architect's report being delivered, and that worries Gianni. You know, one of the councillors on council once said to me, look, you can't have Aboriginal sites everywhere, we've got businesses to run. And I said, all right, well you take me to one Aboriginal site that I can show someone. And he goes, you got me there. A spokesperson for KFC says they have fulfilled all legal requirements to do with construction, including continuing to work with local elders for appropriate on-site recognition of the buried heritage. But the Newcastle case is not unique, says Greens MLC David Shoebridge, and he adds the state government ultimately has to answer for its lax protections. What we are seeing is instead of protecting the sites, at best we get conditions put in place that they have to photograph the site before they destroy it and maybe secure a small number of artefacts from the site. 
you know, we can't have people out at every site um, telling people no you can't you can't develop or you can't dig here because there's a site there. we just haven't got the manpower to do that Paul Morris from the Metropolitan Land Council agrees, saying groups like his are underfunded. Today he's visiting a listed site in Croma on Sydney's northern beaches where he alleges electricity subcontractors cut up an engraving of a sacred footprint while laying a cable. Um, well, this is the outline of, of the heel. After two years of pressure, a case is now before the Land and Environment Court. Oscridge, the respondent, is unable to comment for legal reasons. But for the local Indigenous people, the outcome in court won't undo the cultural damage. One of the first comparisons we'll draw is, you know, this is uh, like a, a memorial site to us. This is, a, this is evidence that, um, of the first history of this country, uh, the first Australian history. And um, to see that just destroyed you know, if you compare that to an Anzac memorial in a park, you know, being destroyed, that's, that's really disheartening. The Greens say the government dragged its feet when it came to taking what he says is a weak action. If these sites were in Rome or in Paris or in London, they would be given parks, extraordinary levels of protection and national respect. But in Australia, we have sites that are 10 and 20,000 years old, being destroyed for things like fast food outlets. It's simply a crime. There's no easy fix to protect the state's fragile sites like this one here in Bondi. While the Greens and land councils want more money spent on enforcement, an environmental ministry staffer has told 730 New South Wales that its officers are handling all legal and development issues appropriately. But is that enough to halt the spread of destruction? The message is that we're saying is that, oh, we like your culture. We'll do the acknowledgement and the welcome to countries, but when it comes down to the nitty gritty of actually making sure that uh, we look after and document and make sure that those stories are backed up with real evidence, and that's what you find when you do archaeological digs, is real evidence, um, then we're involved in a form of cultural genocide. Paul Morris says the vanishing culture belongs to us all and must be saved at all costs. The history of, of this country is built on Aboriginal history, so to see that history destroyed, it's, um, it's, it's really you know, disheartening. And the state government will convene a heritage working party early next year. Tomorrow is World.